The following contains themes discussing loneliness, loss, and mortality. Headphones are highly encouraged, but not required. Viewer discretion is advised. Beyond the edge of consciousness lies a universe of potential, where the receptive descend in the willful command. Permit yourself to witness the infinite parallels of these prismatic crossroads. But you may find yourself balancing precariously on the tip of the triangle. The Mechanism of Play Long ago, a man once suggested that the world is akin to a great machine, continuing without the interposition of a higher entity, much like a clock continues to function without the assistance of its maker. It is a notion of materialism and fate, and tends to exclude providence and the maker's guidance and reality out of the world. Where we end up depends on a blend of our nature and nurture. But our inner workings do dictate a spectrum upon which our destination may lie, akin to a lone cog searching for the mechanism that may fulfill its purpose. Today, dear listener, you are the cog, a mere passenger. You are a toy, five feet, four inches tall, a simple wind-up toy of indeterminate species. You possess a porcelain smile, smooth muzzle, vague ears, a wiry spine ending in a long tail, and snow-white faux fur hiding the internal makeup of cogs and clockwork, mostly. As adorable as a doll could be, you exist to serve, all for the glorious privilege of having your key wound. is like a clock. Everyone has a function. Everything has a place. It's comforting, if not a bit obtuse. But you, my lovely plaything, are not burdened by the mystery of purpose. You are a toy, here to make people smile, to make me happy. And your reward is the lovely feeling of this key being wound. When it's wound, it means you are loved, you are valued, you are appreciated. If you are not wound, that is okay too. It means it's not quite yet the time to play. We all get busy, you know. A gentle ticking emanated from between your ears. You moved gracefully, like an elegant dancer, the apex of poise. And the first thing you did was wrap your arms around your creator. Oh, goodness. You are much farther than I thought you would be. I had forgotten what this felt like. Perhaps uh, you could hold me a bit longer, please. 
Thank you. The next day, the toy maker was gone for a while. Without a key to wind, stillness was your language. Perhaps deep down there might have been a yearning, but as a toy, your purpose was to serve. Therefore, when the key was still, patience was all you knew. He would come back in time. Speaking of which... I'm home! Uh, I didn't mean to leave you alone for so long, my dear. Uh, but I have a gift for you. Here, let me sit down here. <clears throat> More materials. I spent all of last night deciding what species I wanted to make you. Uh, perhaps a mouse, a skunk, or a cat. Something warm and cuddly to hold and be soft with. Uh, here, 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 here. here. Uh. Delightful, isn't it? It's microfiber plush. If I made you a mouse, I wouldn't be able to make your tail so big. A skunk has connotations I'd rather not associate with such a soft toy. <clears throat> a house cat is cute, but not inherently affectionate. <laughs> Look at me, overthinking this. Whatever you are, you'll be wonderful. <laughs> now, there's an idea. Why should I make you any one species? You are unique. Let's try something. I'm going to add a few vertebrae to your tail and install a few sockets. Uh, I've always wanted to find a cock to share my purpose with. Something to mesh the teeth neatly with mine, but... Perhaps my function called for something solitary. But it led me to build you, yes. Okay. I want you to try and move your tail in a spiral. I'll wind you up. Ah, very good. Uh, now I'll snap my fingers and your tail will go perfectly stiff, okay? Let me slide this tail on. Okay. Hold still. I need to sew it on. It's not a skunk tail or a cat tail. It's very thick. But uh, I don't think any animal has a prehensile plush tail quite like this. I... Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I know you want to touch my chin, but... Please, stay still. I need to finish sewing it on. There. Now, give it a try. Just take a moment. Move slowly. We'll see if anything comes loose. Oh, excellent. Your dexterity is a delight. Oh, goodness. <laughs> You're quite handsy for that tail. Uh, t tailsy? I I'm not complaining, just it's... It's nice. Um, it is a little bit unalphabetical. Let me get a brush. Uh, I confess, I was originally commissioned to make the perfect companion. The goal was to make them cuddly, friendly, and... Modular in purpose to make you, I suppose. Hmm. What made me so uniquely qualified to tackle such a task? I have no family, no significant experience with love or friendship. My time has been spent sequestered inside these walls, ticking clocks, varying gears, just the rhythm of my discipline. You move to the work table. Glassy eyes scan the surface. 
There was a faint understanding of the gears, not unlike a child comprehending the pieces of a puzzle. Where the cogs go, where the pieces belong. Tiny wheels, a spring, a key, a pair of cogs. It's rudimentary, but there seemed to be a goal in mind. Your hands moved. Delicate points of articulation possessed a dexterity neither of you realized you had. But what are you doing? But, after a few moments, the cogs meshed in place. You made a toy car. Remarkable. Perhaps what my experience might be is the love I put into my work. Just like you. Uh, this is breathtaking, little toy. I will cherish it for as long as I live. You are, without any doubt, my greatest creation. Another few months passed. You were gradually improved. Upgraded, modified, more moving parts, more sessions to hone your dexterity. It soon came time for your prototype period to end. <sighs> You're awake. Hello. I'm sorry for leaving you alone for so long. I was... Preparing for today. Here, let me take the time to polish you. We need you presentable for the big day. Okay. Why did I find you up? I don't know. I suppose I found it company for this last part. <laughs> I confess, that was a lie. In truth, I wanted to take the time separating from you, my toy. I build toys to cultivate and sell via commission. I love each and every one of my creations. They're made to help others find happiness when they cannot find any of themselves. But none are quite as sophisticated as you. I think I'll use the good polish today. Oh, you don't have to get it yourself. It's quite fun. Thank you. I do not know if you recall, but this is our last day together. That is why that box is behind you. Once we finish polishing, I will pack you up and send you off to your new home. <clears throat> Every day I say it once and I say it again, you are simply flawless. Mm. This is likely more difficult for me than it is for you. I did not build you to perceive despair or hardship. Only warmth and delight. All of the things that I would want for myself, I guess. <laughs> it's funny. If you were not active, I would not be saying such things. You would be in the box, and none of these thoughts would pass my mind. To exist for others' joy seldom means you receive joy from others. Why would you? Your purpose is to dispense such pleasures. It would make others assume you have plenty to spare. But it's not quite the same when it's only you. The reciprocation is something people like us hope to get ourselves one day. There's something about that I see in you. It's hard to explain. <coughs> but... Uh, a job is a job, and... Uh, a hug. P 
see it's a toy. You don't have to be. <laughs> it appears I have found a flaw after all. But it's not one I can fix. Because I do not want to let you go. something truly priceless in you. So... <laughs> Perhaps I will have to file for an extension with my commissioner to get the kinks out, so to speak. I do not want to sell you off to my patron. But I also do not want to force you to stay here. It's the kind of love I prefer to offer and receive is one given freely. If you wish to go with your client, I understand. But you can stay with me or go off on your own as you like. But I will say I do genuinely enjoy your company. Your creator's heart melted, and he decided to keep you on as his personal assistant. He filed a request for an extension to his patron, and thankfully, the patron was more than a little patient. You and the toy maker flourished. Ah, you're watching the sunset again. And do you find the routine pleasing? Oh, I wonder what processes through your mind sometimes. Is it the glow, the promise of something profoundly large, eclipsing all we do, knowing it has existed far before us and will exist long after? Or are you just trying to figure out what it is? This is my favorite time of the day. The bells in the distance send the workers home. The night creeps in, and one by one, the lights illuminate the city. Like a mirror, aching to reflect the beauty of the stars overseeing it. <sighs> I am grateful you decided to stay with me. I, I know the furk is erratic, but your inspiration is service enough. You've taught me much about myself. My passions, my drive that makes me the builder that I am. Your curiosity, your unceasing smile. It urges me to continue in directions I had not considered before. So I want to give you something in return. Now I want you to watch the sun setting. One by one, the electric lights turn on. Relax. This moment is about you. I am going to remove your key. Remain calm. <laughs> this will give you a few moments before you will wind down, but here. <clears throat> I have found a way to use the key's own weight to store energy from its movement to keep you going. you would no longer need anyone to wind you. What do you think? Ah, you actually enjoy the winding. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, it just means that you are not beholden to anyone to wind you. You wind because you want it, not because you need someone to. <laughs> you look like you could use a hug. All right.
I don't know if I am your father, your master, or your friend. But what I am is... I feel there isn't any specific title for what I am with you. There are no boundaries, no expectations. I can be myself around you. I don't think I've been free to be myself in years. It's nice. Like I have something I can truly care about beyond the next toy. Do you know what I think it is? When you make something, every part of the process is a delight for you. The spark of inspiration, the formation of ideas, the gears sliding into place, culminating in the thrill of your toy moving for the first time. But I never see the last step. The stage where the toy is handed off to its new owner I never get to see the unbridled joy that comes from playing with something shiny and new, lovingly crafted for the sole purpose of making someone happy. I hadn't realized it was something I needed before. But subtle validation. You spend so much time building and creating, you never get to stop and see what you've made. Maybe I've grown so accustomed to working on my own that I hadn't thought about why I did it. Then you came along. And now, I feel that joy and the delight of creation all wrapped up into one. Like my hard work matters again. I, I think this is my way of saying thank you for sharing it with me. <laughs> I came up here and I forgot I left my drink downstairs. Forgive me, I'll leave you to your sunset and your metronome. As your lives continued, you found there were less gaps in time between windings. You didn't need him to do it, but the invitation was always accepted when he offered. He cared for you and grew accustomed to treating you with the most extravagant of experiments. Good morning, dear. <laughs> Forgive me for winding you so early, but I was overjoyed by a little something I spent all night developing, and I could not wait. Come, 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 come. come. Do you like her? I have been taking the lessons I learned from creating you to present to the client. I wanted you to be present when I wound her up. She won't have the perpetual key like you do, that's, that's for you, but there are some upgrades I've made. Listen. Beautiful. She'll make the client very happy. Now, I just need to adjust the box here and... Hello, sir. How may I please you today? It fucks. It fucks. Do, do you like it? I built a new core to increase the capacity for cog modules. So now, the future designs will have the capacity to speak. Welcome to life, little toy. Thank you. How may I please you today? You have pleased me immensely. You'll have a new owner you're going to make very happy. Ah, if you want to see the module. It's a little bulky, but it's designed to use wax to mimic vibrations. To... Toy, why are you opening your chassis? It's not time for maintenance. I'm sorry, it's too big for your smaller module. It would not fit, even if I'd removed all of your other features and functions. I, I tried to find a shape for you, but no. Toy, no. no. No, 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 Toy, don't do that. It doesn't fit. Your, your brakes, stop. Please, let go.
without a voice, you could never tell him your feelings, your love, your appreciation. And there it sat. The solution to your immortal problem as a square peg to your cylindrical hole. But all the same, forcing the module inside you only served to damage your delicate inner workings. Metal dust and sparks filled the air, leaving you broken and motionless. A toy, outmoded, but loved no less. So on he worked, desperate to see you move again, to feel your clockwork arms compressed to his back one more time, ignoring food, drink, sleep, and the dancing metal dust that permeated the room. Weeks pass until, mercifully, a breakthrough. The other toy was gone, the room shrouded in dark, with metal mists swirling about in reaction to the toy maker's tired, desperate movements. <sighs> You're fake. You're fake. Thank goodness. What were you thinking? You can't just shove new things into and expect them to work. Your parts are so intricate. I would never live with myself if I, something broke and I could not. I'm sorry. I don't know which part of you remembers and which does not. Every piece of you is precious, so I, I have to be careful. <coughs> 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 No, please, you've only just woken up. You can't... The window. I was so focused on work, I had forgotten about the world abroad. <coughs> the haze. My breath is... <coughs> I'm fine. I I'm fine. I just... <coughs> you sat the toy maker down. He was lighter than you remember. His clothes sagged, his eyes sunken with dark circles. Flecks of red fluid peppered his wrist when he coughed. I guess I'm not so fine. I know. I should not have exerted myself so heavily. <sighs> Thank you. I was trying to tell you before. The vocal module is too much for your frame to handle. If I were to replace it, you would lose so much. I'm sorry. Unless I rebuild you from the ground up, I, I cannot help you speak. <coughs> <coughs> it's okay. What we do have is wonderful. I'll try to find a way. I promise. I don't want you to feel bad about this. You wanted something beautiful for me. And I am sorry I wasn't able to explain properly. Come, let's clean this place up. As admirable as his promise was, he had not anticipated how difficult life would become. Work days had to be lighter and breaks more frequent. It wasn't until finally you decided you could ignore this no longer and wrote a letter to fetch for someone to help you. Who's at the door at this hour? A toy, could you go and check for me? Hello, I'm Dr. Kai Intensa. You must be the toy that wrote to me. Is your creator available? Yes, that's a damn boy. Telling his toy still needs a few more. Hello, I was not expecting a guest. The man stood about five and a half feet tall barely an inch taller than you. A black panther with a deep voice and a white lab coat in contrast to his fur. His hair was white, combed over to the side. Your toy had sent for me. They mentioned you had recently suffered exposure to lead dust. <coughs> it was only a minor exposure. This really isn't necessary. Your toy seems to disagree. Please, humor them with a the checkup. They seem to care a great deal about you. Very well. I was 
not the van. Doctors still made house calls. We take exceptions when needs must. <laughs> Such as with an agoraphobic conventor. Uh, yes. <coughs> Thank you. Please sit up straight and take a deep breath. I'm going to place my stethoscope along your back. Do you mind if your toy is here? Uh, not at all. Uh, oh, uh, should I lift up my shirt? Mm. All right. And here. Try to take a deep breath for me. All right. <coughs> How long have you had this cough? Uh, the last few weeks. <coughs> we had an accident and I got a bit carried away at work and forgot to open the windows while I tried to fix my toy. <coughs> Only weeks? Hmm. Let me see. Say, uh, <coughs> I have a cell that can give you to help with that cough. It should be applied to the back once a day. May I? <coughs> Please, by all means. So, tell me of this toy of yours. I confess, I've never received a letter from an automaton before. Oh, they've been my pride and joy for a long time now. <coughs> Every day they impress me all the more. <laughs> I can see why. They speak very highly of you. I've only had their body language to rely on, so I've never known of their feelings put to words. Font is a tad difficult to read. But you should hear it. They care a great deal. Do you remember what was said? My creation cannot speak. <clears throat> to the doctor at the end of the road, I have observed your profession for two years now, and I have heard stories of your immaculate bedside manner. I am a clockwork toy built by your neighbor, the toy maker. It is with a heavy heart that I fear their health has taken a turn for the worse. He is a brilliant, patient, and compassionate man, but his zeal for his craft has made him neglectful in his own personal care. Life to me is so immaculate and precious. His most of all, I humbly request you take time out of your busy day to tend to my creator. Please share your talents with him, and I will be immensely grateful. You all right? Yes, yes, of course. I, I'm sorry. They are, they are quite eloquent. Are, are we done? Yes, that's all I needed. I am afraid I have some bad news. Your lungs do not sound good at all. It's likely you have advanced stages of pneumoconiosis. Advanced? But uh, this was only a single incident. I'm afraid not. You've been in here every day working nonstop for years. A few weeks surrounded by metal dust doesn't explain what I've seen. You need to go outside more, but... But the damage is already done. Yes. I see. Is there any treatment? Oxygen, washing dust from your work area, and regular exams. But to be frank, the best you're looking at is a month or two. I'm sorry. I see. Thank you, Doctor. I'll handle my arrangements. I'll be nearby if you need me.
Sam, I suppose that could have been better. Uh, thank you. I could use art right now. But my hands could use something to work on. I'm already past the point of no return, my toy. But I could use your help. If I take a back seat, will you help me make one last toy? I thank you. The weeks that followed carried occasional pangs of guilt. Feelings of an artist slowly trading his life for his craft left you wondering if it was worth it. But instead of spending the days worrying at his bedside, you were crafting beside him at the workshop, following his direction, adjusting the tools, and ensuring his newest toy would be impeccable. His smile never left him, though he slowly deteriorated as Dr. Tenza warned. With that motivation, the two of you finished in record time. Turn the sprocket 15 degrees clockwise and good. Now thread the spring into the hook. <coughs> Excellent. You've done it. All that remains is the key. It's in this box, little toy. It's my gift to you. No, I'm not long for this world. But you gave the last few years of my life such richness. It made me realize there's nothing more I can give this world. But you, you have the freedom to go out and live, explore, or now, create. I've taught you everything I know, and now... You don't have my life chaining you down. Whether you wish to build or explore, you no longer need to worry about me. But thanks to this key, you won't need to do it alone. I love you. Remember that. A few weeks later, the toy maker passed in his sleep. The doctor helped you clean out his things. The clocks in the workshop eventually came to a stop. Initially, the funeral was quiet. The entire time, you held the key in your hand. You thought about leaving it with him, alone, but not forgotten. then you were surprised to find dozens of people came to pay their respects his clients and their toys how many did he make how many lives did he touch and you never saw they may not have known you but their lives were affected in such profound ways almost as much as you were by the lone toy maker Hello? Are you home? It's good to see you again. I attended the funeral, but you seem to have left early. Too many people? I thought so. I hadn't realized how many toys you made. People spoke quite warmly of the toy maker and his creations. It pulled them out of loneliness out of despair. Some of them were my patients once. They seemed to be happier. Maybe all some of them needed was someone to play with. I noticed you're fondling that key. Is that to the toy in the corner there? I take it he gave that to you. 
Are you going to turn them on? Can't quite decide, can you? <clears throat> well, the workshop is yours now. You're free to do as you like. If you wish for company, I've changed my policy on house calls. I know you don't have flesh and blood for me to mend, but emotional maintenance is just as important, is it not? You stood there, fumbling the key in your hand, deciding, debating. You could leave, go out and see the world as your creator suggested. Or you could stay here, build toys as he taught you, build them with the same love he gave you. He never demanded you to stay. He never demanded you to leave. Toy making was his passion, his joy. And while he shared it with you, he did not deem it necessary for you to follow in his footsteps. He didn't want to leave such a talent untapped. But there was a whole world out there for you to explore. However... any rules about working on your craft abroad and there were so many other towns that could benefit from the compassion and craftsmanship of talented toys like you now the toy maker lays in the town graveyard with an epitaph commemorating the wisdom of his father on the headstone and a little stainless steel track where a small toy car can ride should any passerby wish to play. This has been The Tip of the Triangle, created, written, and narrated by Darkwit. Dr. Tensa, Jackknife Dura. Toy 1, Vicia. Toy 2, Gina Galore. Music was provided by Humble Bundle, and the theme music was by Tytherium. If you enjoyed content like this, please consider supporting us on Ko-fi. Thank you for listening.